won't see that printed too. The coach sat down and said, where do I start? <laughs> All right, let's start with this. Uh, I thought our team found a way to win a game when our offense wasn't necessarily clicking. When you look at what we did on the defensive end, I was very proud of our guys uh, holding the team to 30 percent. Thought we did our job on the defensive end. When you have so many new pieces, what happens a lot of times when you when your offense is not going, a lot of times you struggle in other areas. But we continue to defend. Uh, what I wasn't happy with at halftime was that I thought we, we gave up 13 offensive rebounds. Now, that being said. This is the best offensive rebounding team that we played in a long time. And if you don't believe me, just check the stats. I watched the Washington game and they had 29 offensive rebounds and it scared me to death. Uh, I thought we did a tremendous job in the second half limiting those guys to five. Uh, this is a tough team. I told everybody when we played Colgate, it was a tough team. And a lot of times as people or fans, you look at the team and say, wow, man, they should be killing them. Colgate had a great win on the road last night against Syracuse by 15. Texas Southern will compete for their championship in their league. Um, they're older. They know how to play. Uh, the coach does a good job. It's a good win for us. It's a good early win that we got to build on and, and certainly get better in some areas. So, questions? Coach, uh, the guy said you had a pretty animated halftime speech. Can you get him going? Can you give us a <laughs> You want, me, you, want me to, you want me to repeat the speech? <laughs> <laughs> what can I pray that you can repeat that? <laughs> I don't curse. I, mean, I, just, I, just, I don't curse kids out. My, my hands hurt, though. I can tell you that now. No, I just, I, I was disappointed. I don't like to be, I don't want anybody to be tougher than us. I want any coaching staff to be tougher than mine, and I don't want any um, team to be tougher than our players. And I thought we got pushed around, and we didn't make physical blockouts. We didn't finish our possession. So, Jonas, in a really nice, polite way that my mom would be proud if she read this, I just said, hey, we need to get tougher. And I thought we did in the second half. Kevin, obviously they're a good rebounding team, and obviously Manny isn't here. Is there anything that you can do to, you know, to circumvent the lack of size or experience inside that and improve that rebounding, or is this something you just basically have to live with? Well, we just got to – I mean, I can't bring another seven-footer in. NCAA won't let me get a scholarship right now to bring somebody in. I just we have to get better with what we have, and, and to our young guys' defense, um, we're trying EB, we're trying Jalen Gibson, and Ernest is trying to work his way into the mix. But guys, we lost a heck of a player. Uh, we lost, you know, probably the best defensive player in the country. I know in the ACC, and he was a really good offensive player. He was developing into a good player. When I told you guys he was stepping out to make 18 and three pointers, he was. That being said. It's my job to try to figure out how to help these other guys get better. And our guards got to be better to help our young guys get better. They'll get better as we play along. They've already come a long ways in a short amount of time. And I don't want to, you know, by me talking about Manny, which we miss Manny, but I don't want to disrespect our young guys who's going to get better and going to help us win a lot of games. Uh, we've been able to win some tough games early without Manny, and I want to continue to get better in that area. I heard you wasn't in the DMC. Manny and Street Club with Jericho's fouled out with 15 minutes left, and then you got sophomore juniors pressure on the court to win the game. Yeah, it's not encouraging to me. <laughs> I looked over there, I said, man, what's, what's going on? No, I thought our guys stepped up, and, and, you, and you're right, Jonas. We had so many new faces. You know, with DJ Funderburg gone, you had a Braxton Beverly, you had uh, Manny Bates who's out, and Jericho. All of those guys played big time minutes for us last year, and to look on the court, and we stretched it out with the guys that we had I thought was good. We went small, and I played Seabrook kind of as a big guard, as a power forward, and we did a good job. It was, it was very encouraging. Seabrook didn't want to brag about his weight room numbers, but how have you seen him morph from high school point guard to now double-digit rebounder and a guy who finishes through contact? Did you say, you say his weight room numbers? Does he have them? No, he don't have them. <laughs> no, he, let's give him credit. Um, he's another kid that's come through this program that has developed into a really good basketball player. I can always point to Jericho. I can always point to DJ Funderburg. We can always go to Devin Daniels, CJ Bryce, Jericho Hellams. But he's the next line of guys that got an opportunity last year, took advantage of it, and now he's playing really good basketball. I don't know if there's another sophomore in our conference that's playing better than him. Maybe somebody may be equal, but not better than him. 
And a lot of it, JC, is because he has confidence in the weight room. His numbers are not um, going to jump off the chart. But he, you know, last year he would drive the ball and create shots at the rim. And now he's going through contact, which is good for us. And also finishing at the rim today was Cam Hayes. Were you glad that he didn't settle for the jumper? Well, me and Cam Hayes, we got this, um, we go back and forth. <laughs> and, and who, who won today? Is whether it's a better shot to play off two feet or one leg. And I'm almost there when I've got him out of that year roll and one leg fall away. If you guys remember, he took that shot about 12 times last year, and guess how many he made? One. Yeah. And so now. He seemed so, different today, though. Oh, he's different. He started to finish. Um, you know, he, we played him for a long, a lot of minutes. He'd had some problems uh, in the last couple of days because a couple of games because he was cramping up. And he finished the game. He made big shots for us. He did a good job. But. As a point guard, I got a couple things I could go back and get on him for you. One for four from the free throw line, so we'll work on that. Going back to Darion, a lot of kids who had to redshirt his first year and then last year until Devon got hurt and he wasn't playing a lot, they just said, forget this, they'd have gotten in the portal and, 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 and tried somewhere else. What does it say about him that he put in the work, stuck it out, and now he's taking advantage of this opportunity? Well, I mean, last year, if you remember, he was such a huge part of our – you know, when Devin went down, we found we were four and eight, and I've never been in a situation where my teams were four and eight in this league, and we found a way to win five consecutive road games. He was a big part of that. If you look at it, he had two great games last year. It kind of gave you a little glimpse of how he was going to be this year. He played great at Notre Dame and at Wake Forest. And from that point on, he's been that guy. And now he's even, he even stepped up and took a couple threes. I think he took four. And I, we want him to because he's putting in a lot of work and I think he made one of those um, three-pointers. But, he, you know, he believes in NC State. His opportunity is here uh, with the transfer portal. At any moment, any kid can leave any program. But I think he saw his development that he's got here at NC State. What can a senior like uh, Cole learn from tonight from the mistakes he made that led him missing out the last 15 or so minutes of the game? Uh, don't worry about it. It's, me and him will have a bunch of conversations. <laughs> you know, it's just – I, I, you know, I'm, I can go. I can go a lot of ways with that, um, but basically, I don't want him talking to the referees. Now, should it happen the way it happened? Probably not. But I don't want him talking to the referees. I'll be the only one that should be talking to the referees. You said in the off season when you, when you signed Breon, he brought that football toughness. You just said at halftime you didn't want to be tough for you guys. Was that kind of why he got a little? Or in late second half, you know, you were in the kind of toughness against Texas Southern. Yeah, and Jonas, I'm going, I got to find him more minutes. Um, he didn't have the greatest week of practice, um, but he brings toughness to our team. You know, we forget that we're playing three legitimate high school I mean, um, freshmen in college. They were all in high school last year. I don't know that anybody in our league is playing three guys who were in high school. And so one, one game is going to be to Quavion. Ernest is coming along, and then Breon. And so he does bring toughness to us. He's going to be good as he gets comfortable. Uh, this is the first time that he's been 100% basketball player. You know, he was probably playing in the state championship last year this time for football. And so as he gets comfortable with our system and, you know, become a full-time basketball player, he's going to help us a lot. Do you have any update on Greg Gant, how quick he might be here? I don't. He's coming along. Um, I, I don't want to put a time on it. I have no idea when he's going to play. Not fair for me to say that he's going to play in two weeks, three weeks, or first semester. Uh, I, I will tell you, he's getting better.